Earth. In the previous tutorials, we have shown you many features in Apple Studio in order to exercise the idea of uh, design by contracts and test-driven developments. As for design by contracts, Apple supports uh, precondition, postcondition, and class invariants for you to actually write executable contracts or predicates to describe what your software is supposed to achieve. And those contracts can be uh, turned into runtime assertions that will be monitored by the IFA runtime system so that if your software actually, when you're actually running the tests, if your software does not behave according to your specification or your contracts, then you will get contract violation. And depending on whether you fail the precondition or postcondition, you can actually decide uh, either it's the client side to be blamed or it's the supplier side to be blamed because you have to be clear about the obligation and benefits of the clients and the supplier. As for the test-driven developments, we always advocate the writing of tests even before you write the uh, implementation body of your features. So you always try to document, uh, once you have documented your precondition, postcondition, and class invariants of your class, you can already set up your infrastructure for the testing. And although the tests wouldn't pass, but once you set up the infrastructure, then as soon as you actually fill in the gap for the implementation details, then you can already start writing, uh, running the tests without any further delay. And the essence of test-driven developments is you should never wait until you have completed all your software developments to do your test cases. You should always test one small piece at a time. So every time you introduce a new change uh, into your system, you have to make sure that new change does not introduce any bugs into your uh, existing system observed by uh, a red bar of your generated test report. And we have shown you how you can use the uh, eSpec iPhone specification testing library to do this. That's really the lessons you have learned so far from the previous tutorials. In this, uh, in this tutorial, we're going to show you briefly the idea about information hiding. Essentially, uh, an example of information hiding, which means the supplier has to somehow hide the information that they might change later on uh, throughout the uh, lifetime of the system because of maybe some of the pattern of usage, etc. And while they're doing this such changes, the clients who actually use the code, who actually use the service from the supplier should not be affected. As far as the client is concerned, they only care about the surface, services they are provided. But if somehow the internal workings of the services are changed or modified or op optimized, the client should not be affected as far as the interfaces are concerned. So the single, uh, the uniform access principle actually exactly demonstrate this point. So that's what we're going to show you uh, uh, how we can refactor the uh, bank account system uh, in order to, uh, from one implementation to another without affecting the clients of the account, but we only changing the implementation detail. Okay, so let me uh, again launch the terminal and make sure we are in the right place for the uh, workspace of the projects for, uh, for 3311. So let's launch the version of Apple Studio for summer 2015, which is 1501, and write in the background by using ampersand. And let's make sure we actually are choosing the projects from the right location, and we are indeed, and we're going to click on that, and then we'll say open. Okay, so let's go to the bank projects, uh, the bank cluster. And then let's go to the account class, and let's look at the contract view. The contract view reflects how the clients of the account class proceed, perceive about this class. So as you can see in the contract view, the clients, uh, how the imp how the client uh, how the supplier of account has implemented each feature is irrelevant to the clients. For example, you can see 
for the deposit and withdraw feature, all we see are is the uh, are the contracts of the features, and also we have we also only see the uh, invariants of the classes uh, of the class. So from the client's point of view, as long as the interface, meaning that the uh, the name of the feature and their parameter type, if any, uh, remain stable, then the client's code may re uh, can rely on the interface. And as long as the interface is stable, meaning that if the supplier does not suddenly change, for example, to add a parameter to the deposits or to uh, get, uh, to add another parameter to the deposit or to delete the parameter for the deposit. If, he, if the supplier does this, that means the client's code that relies on uh, the changed feature has to be changed as well. So this is not the good practice. So we want to say, we want to make sure when the supplier designs the interface, interface has to be stable from the very beginning. And the, the idea about information hiding is the supplier should hide everything that might be subject to change, uh, which means they are uh, unstable, com uh, contrast with the uh, interface. For anything that's uh, subject to change, the supp supplier should effectively hide them from the clients. Okay, so for this particular tutorial, we're going to make uh, show you the example for the balance feature. So the balance, from the client's point of view, uh, they only perceive the black balance as the uh, net value as a consequence of the history of deposits and withdrawal. Okay, and it doesn't really matter how the supplier has implemented this. So there might be two possible. There are two possible ways that the supplier might implement the balance, and none of that is actually relevant to uh, the client's concern. Okay. However, the supplier has to decide which one to use in order to make sure they are they use in the right way, and also in the right application context. So let us see that uh, from the uh, supplier's point of view. Let's go back to the basic uh, text view. So currently, we actually we could say the supplier of the bank account has implemented the balance feature by storage in the sense that the balance has been stored as a state attribute, which means every time, so that means every object of the account has been reserved with a spot where the balance value is stored. And uh, because of that, so that means for each of the state changing feature, they have to make sure they update the balance correctly. So for example, you can see that in the make feature here, we got to make sure the balance is initialized to be zero. And for all the commands, they are state changing. For example, for the withdraw, we have to make sure the balance is re reassigned to the correct new value, which is the old balance minus A. And also here, uh, for withdraw on dates, we also have to make sure the balance is properly decremented. And symmetrically, for the deposit feature, we have to make sure the balance is properly incremented. And on the other hand, for those queries, which means they return something without changing the states of the system, they do not have to worry about updating the uh, balance because they cannot update the states. Okay, that's really about the consequence when you are actually choosing to implement the balance by storage, which means uh, you, we are implementing it by uh, using state attributes. We're storing its value. So what's really the, uh, the advantage for this? The advantage for this is if, let's say, we have a long list, we have a long list of deposits and withdrawals. So every time, let's say, we are and also we are trying to access the balance of a particular account quite frequently. If this is the case, then every time when we are trying to access the balance, we do not have to recalculate from the long list of history of deposits and withdrawal. We can simply just retrieve the values that we have maintained consistently so far. As you, as you can see, the catch is for each state changing command or constructor, we have to make sure for each one of them, every time we call the uh, state changing command, the balance is properly maintained 
as consistent with the cl uh, the clients uh, how how the clients perceive about this balance, which is the net value. Okay, so this is advantage. But what about the disadvantages? So the the disadvantages. So let's say what if the balance is not so frequently uh accessed uh sorry not so frequently queried about. However. If we have so many feature, so many state changing features, then for each one of them, uh, for all of them, we actually have to make sure the balance has been maintained consistently throughout. So in some way, uh, the definition of the balance has been scattered out. So you can see you can see the definition of the balance in this in the storage uh, implementation mechanism is kind of uh, split into here where it is initialized. And here, where it is decremented, and here, where it is decremented again on the particular dates, and here, when it is actually incremented. So you can see the definition is not so easily seen from the state attributes version of the implementation. So that's the disadvantage, uh, in the sense that you have to make sure all the state changing commands uh, have updated the uh, balance consistently. So the other possible mechanism for the supplier to implement this balance is by computation, which means in the case where if the balance is actually <clears throat> if, if the balance is not uh, is actually not accessed so frequently and uh, we actually have so many features that might change the state of the balance, so we better have a uniform place. We better have a single place to define how the balance should be calculated, okay? In which case, so we are going to define the balance instead of as a st uh, state attributes by storage, we're going to define that as a function, which means every time if, if the client is trying to access balance, instead of accessing a particular spot in the objects of the account, it is going to do the calc it's going to do a fresh computation to see what the balance should be at the current point. What's the advantage of that? So the advantage of implementing balance as a uh, function is uh, you actually have a single place to hold the definition for the balance. And in the case where you don't have so uh, you don't have so frequent accesses to the balance and you don't have so so uh, you don't have so substantial lists lists of history for the deposit and withdrawals, you do actually avoid the hassle of maintaining the consistent updates for uh, to the balance for all these state changing uh, commands. Okay, so you really have to know what's the advantage and disadvantage for either of the two uh, implementation mechanism. Okay, so now, however, the bottom line is changing from the storage to computation or from computation back to storage is actually some secret that the supplier should have hidden from the uh, client which means me as a client, I should not be able to tell whether the supplier has switched from one implementation mechanism to the other because the way I access the balance will be exactly the same. Let me show you what I mean. So if you go to one of the clients of account, which is a test account, so if we go to, uh, for example, let's say the test account creation and also similarly for other test features, you can see after we have created initialize the account, the way we access the balance is by object act.balance. So when I call this act.balance here, I have no clue, in fact, I don't care if the balance internally has been implemented as an attribute uh, by storage or as a function by computation. Me as a client, I don't care. So if somehow the account had, uh, the account supplier has changed the way the balance has been implemented from storage to computation. I don't have to change the way I access the balance. This access from the client's point of view remains the same. So that's basically the uniform access principle. Okay, so let's demonstrate this. So again, if you see the contract view, because contract view is also available to the clients, you can see that for many of the features, we also have the balance in the contract. And for example, you can see that withdraw on dates. 
here you can see that balance equals old balance minus a. So here the balance might refer to either the internal attributes or you might to the internal function uh, by computation. So also if we if the supplier also changes from storage to computation or from computation to storage for the balance, this part of the contract that has to do with balance also do not have to be changed. Okay, so there are two things that should also read. Uh, so uniform uh, access principle says that if somehow the supplier of account changes the secret implementation of the balance, there are two things that should remain constant, should remain un untouched. So one is in the pre and post condition of the uh, account class, because they are available to the clients, the way we access the balance should remain untouched, should may remain unchanged. And the second thing that should remain unchanged is how the clients access the uh, balance. So you can see this is a, a piece of client's code. Here the client is trying to access the balance by using act.balance, and this should not change even if the internal implementation changes. Okay, let's demonstrate how this can happen, can, be, uh, can occur. So let's go back to the basic text view. So let's say somehow the supplier decides that it's more beneficial to, re, uh, to avoid the hassle of trying to maintain the consistency of the storage of the state attribute of balance throughout all the state changing commands. What we want to do is to convert that into a, uh, into a uh, uh, function. So a function returns something and also you can see you can see the difference. Now this is actually a state attributes of type integer. And now by giving a do and block, we are converting this into a uh, function that takes no arguments but returns an integer and uh, with a function body here. And the way to access the state attributes or the function is exactly the same uh, as far as the clients of account is concerned. Okay, let's do this, then let's try to compile. Okay, so now because we are changing from the uh, attributes uh, mechanism to the uh, function mechanism, so that means we can no longer assign to this function anymore. So we have to somehow change the internal uh, manipulation on this balance here. Okay, so here you can see all the four compile time errors are only about the secret part of the supplier meaning the internal implementation of the state changing command. So for example, if we look at the first one of them, it says that in the context of the deposit uh, feature, and let me also double click on that so we can go there to see. If we go there, so this error message says that the target of the assignment is not writable because now we just change the balance from state attributes into a function. So you cannot af assign anything to a function because every function is supposed to uh, is supposed to start its computation every time you call that. So they are not supposed to be writable. So that's what this uh, uh, error message is uh, trying to complain. So this is about the deposit. If you look at the second one, it's about the uh, withdraw on dates, which is another command. And the third one is about the withdraw. And the fourth one is about the make, uh, which is supposed to initialize the balance. Okay, so now to actually make a compile, let's just click on each one of them. We'll just comment them out and we'll say suitable for suitable if balance is incremented by storage, I would say attributes, okay? Let me copy this and then make a comments for you. Okay, the second one is where, uh, whoops, let me uh, redo it again. Okay, that's, uh, let me get rid of the line number. Okay, compile, so one of them is gone. So this is the place where withdraw on dates, also updates, used to up update the balance. So let me comment this out and paste the comments here. And third one is the uh, withdraw. And let's comment that out and paste these comments here. And the last one 
is the constructor. So we get rid of that initialization and we put it here. And let's see if that compiles. Okay, let's have a look at the contract view. You can see these are the only four things we have. Uh, the, these are the only four corrections we have to make in order to make it compilable again. You can see we didn't actually have to change the client's code at all. So we didn't actually have to come here and change the client's code. That's not we, what we had to do. That's really what it meant by the client is not affected by any internal changes on the secret. So this is really the essence of information hiding and the uniform access principle. So now what we have to do is to, so because it's not recompilable, so, but we have to make sure and whenever we do any changes, either internally or externally, we have to make sure that all the tests still pass. And let's run that. Aha, uh -huh, so we actually fell four out of the six test cases, okay? This is actually quite expected because we have only made, uh, converted this into a function by syntax, but we haven't put any uh, implementation there. So that's what we have to do in order to make the uh, all the test cases pass. But it's always important to make sure you get the system compiled and then you can, you can go ahead and do the implementation. That's how you, how you actually switch from one implementation to another. Always make sure you have the interface compatibility before you go ahead and fill in the uh, implementation details. Okay, in this case, let me just put some comments here. And also, if you look at the contract view, and from the contract view, you can see this balance here is exactly the same as the contract view that we got, but balance was implemented as an attribute. So you can see from the client's point of view, it makes no difference to them whether balance was internally implemented as an attribute or as a function. So let's go back to the uh, basic text view. So now, so we can put the comments for this. Return the net value of uh, current account calculated based on the deposit and withdrawal. Okay, how should we do that? So basically, uh, the idea is very simple. We have to iterate through the deposits and withdrawals, and all the values are that are in the deposit should be a positive, and all the values in the withdrawals should be negative, and we add them up together. Okay, that's an integer, so we're gonna we're gonna need two loops. Let's start with the loop for deposits because that's positive. Okay. Depo as I said before, to actually iterate through a list, we actually have to do the uh, cursor manipulation. So the first one is we have to initialize the cursor until the cursor is actually after the uh, end of the list. Uh, every in each iteration at the end, we have to uh, go one step forth further uh, in the list. Okay, let's make sure it compiles. And now, so here, uh, because uh, the way to get the the uh, the list item that's being pointed by the current cursor position is, uh, we have to say deposit dot item. So you can see now item here. If you only look at the code completion here, item is actually G. So G here is a generic parameter for the list because list, as I said before in the previous tutorial, list class, you should also look it up yourself. The list class is actually with a generic parameter G corresponding to the type of its member, its store item. Because now, because in this case, we actually instantiate the deposit with transaction. So the G here really is the uh, transaction. So that's why iPhone compiler will be able to figure out if I click dot for the code completion, now we are in the context of the transaction class. So we can, we can actually get access to the value. Let's say if you don't have generic parameter, let's say, for example, if you only have a list of objects, what you have to do is actually, is that you have to cast this item explicitly into a transaction and then you can do the value okay that's really the benefits for um, generic parameter okay so now we want to say results is assigned to be is assigned as 
result plus. So you're accumulating the value for each transaction from the deposits. Okay, so this is one way to do it. So or you can actually capture this part as a local variable of type transaction. Actually, I did this in other features in the previous tutorial. I just want to show you different variety, uh, different variants of things that are actually equivalent. Okay, that's how we accumulate the value for the deposits, and now we need to subtract the values from the withdrawals. So it would be a very similar loop pattern. So let me just copy and paste, except I have to change from deposits into withdraw because they are both lists. So the way they traverse would be uh, just similar, except here you will be negative for the withdraw value. Okay, let's compile and then. So this is our implementation for the balance. As you can see, instead of trying to update, uh, in the case of balance being implemented as an attribute, we actually have to explicitly update it in each of the state changing command, including the constructor. But now, since we are switching the implementation mechanism into the uh, function by computation mechanism, so in which case we are defining the meaning of balance in a single place. However, it's really there's, there's really no absolutely correct solution either by storage or computation. You really have to know the uh, the the scenarios to apply one but not the other. Okay, in the case where uh. In the case where the computation cost it will be high, then you shouldn't use this uh, mechanism here, as I just uh, changed to. In the case where if the uh, lists lists of withdrawals and deposits are huge, so you'll be very costly for you to keep uh, recalculating your uh, balance. Then in that case, you better actually use the attributes mechanism. So okay, that's something you have to remember. You have you as a supplier, you have to decide. However, me as a client, I don't care how you implement that, as long as all the test cases still pass. And let's see if that's the case. Let's run the workbench system. And yes, indeed. So you can see that as we first uh, converted from balance uh, being attributes into the uh, into the uh, uh, function into this uh, computation mechanism without any implementation body, we first had to change the way we manipulated the balance in each of the uh, state changing command uh, by commenting out the uh, illegal assignments. And once we, once we have done that, when we ran re ran the uh, test cases, we actually got a red bar simply because we haven't put the implementation body yet. But now, since we have put the implementation already, so now we can rerun the, all, all the tests and verify that such refactoring is actually correct. However, and let me re-emphasize again, for the, uh, for the uni uniform access principle, the most important thing to uh, bear in mind is if you change any of the internal secrets of the supplier, from the client's point of view, they do not have to be affected by to any extent. Uh, namely, they don't have to be, they don't have to modify their code. The way they access that particular feature, either by storage or by computation, is exactly the same. Okay, so uh, this is a very short tutorial, and which is just to illustrate the uh, uniform access principle, which is an example of information hiding. And this is what we are supposed to achieve in this tutorial. So please stay watching.